welcome to section 10.3, the last section of the semester. All right, we're going to start looking at probability, <clears throat> where we're going to need our counting principles that we used in the previous sections. So probability, any happening for which the result is uncertain, is called an experiment. The possible results of the experiment are outcomes. The set of all possible outcomes of the experiment is the sample space of the experiment. Any subcollections of a sample space is an event. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at finding these sample spaces by using tree diagrams, a matrix, counting principles, and so on. And then from that you can then find the probability of these happening. But the most important thing about a probability is finding the total possible outcomes. That's going to be the biggest thing. So we're going to look at our first example here, flipping a coin three times. And we are going to make a tree diagram. So my first flip, I either have heads or tails. Now, from each of those endpoints will come off my second flip. We'll have heads or tails if I flipped heads first. And you'll have heads or tails if you flip the tails first. And from now, these four endpoints from your second flip, you have to have two outcomes again. On your third flip, heads and tails, heads and tails, heads and tails, heads and tails. So now to build your sample space, you start with heads and a heads and a head. So you could flip the coin and get heads three times in a row. Or you could go heads, heads, tails heads, tails, heads. You just follow the path of your branches. Heads, tails, tails. And once those first four are done, we're no longer going to have heads be flipped first. Now we're going to go down the tails branch. So tails, heads, heads. Tails, heads, tails. Tails, tails, heads. Tails, tails, tails. This is my sample space. And there's eight possible outcomes, and you get, get eight because you had two possible outcomes for each flip, and you had three flips, so two to the third power, or two times two times two, is our eight. All right, so that's how you build sample spaces using a tree diagram, which is very convenient if your event has very limited number of outcomes in it. Like your flip, you only have two outcomes. Rolling two dice. Okay, you have, let's say, one dice will be blue. The other dice will be red. And when you roll two dice, we add up the numbers. So here we'll build a matrix of all the possible sums that you can encounter. Now, a lot of times people say, oh, what's my denominator? What's the total outcome? It's not 12. You have six blue numbers times six red numbers for a total of 36. So any probability with rolling two dice has to be a denominator of 36. If we're do working with a deck of cards, another popular um, oh, experiment with cards, especially if you like to play things like blackjack and poker and stuff like that, where you can take people's money because you know how odds and probability work. Hopefully I got your attention. So in a deck of cards we have two different colors, red and black. The two reds suits are hearts and diamonds. The two blacks are clubs and spades. And then you have what is known as your marked cards or your value cards. There is no number one. Ace is not considered a one. So we start at 2, count up to 10, and then there's the jack, queen, king, and ace. If you build a matrix, that represents all 52 cards. Four suits, 13 marked or value cards. I prefer to say marked because the jack, the queen, the king, and the ace technically does not have a value. Face cards are just the jack, queen, and king. Ace is the ace, and these are your value cards. All right, your probability will always be a number of outcomes of the desired event out of the total number of outcomes in the sample space. 
So we'll write this as P of an event. The probability of the event will have the following range. Your probability can be 0 up to a 1 and any fraction or decimal in between. All right, you can never have a probability greater than one, and you can never have a probability less than one. All right, so again, always find the total of number outcomes first, because then when you find the probability of the event, that should never exceed whatever your total number is. So if we're going to find the probability of two tails and three flips, and it's very important to pay close attention to the way it's worded. If we go back to that sample space that we created earlier, how many of these have two tails in it? All right, well, before you figure that out, again, remember, there was eight possible outcomes. So your denominator is going to be eight. Now count the two tails. Uh, no tails, one tails, one tails. Oh, here's two tails. One tail, two tails, two tails. Now, yes, there's two, but really there's three here, so you can't count this because they only wanted two tails. So that would be three out of eight. Now, if we take our event and tweak it just a bit, what's at least two tails and three flips. If we put in that phrase at least two, now you can have two or three. So now we're gonna go ahead and count this last one. So again, our denominator will be eight. Include the three tails. Now it's four out of eight, and that's gonna be one half. So the probability of flipping at least two tails is 50%. All right, next probability, the probability of rolling a seven on two dice. Again, we saw from the previous slide, the total here is 36, so that's your denominator. And now we go ahead and we count up all the sevens that we have. There's one, two, three, four, five, six sevens. So that's six out of 36, which is a probability of one out of six. If I wanted to find the probability of rolling a value greater than eight, again, the denominator is 36, I look for all the numbers that are bigger than an eight. That's the nines, the tens, the 11, and the 12. And I count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten 10 out of 36, or I can reduce that to five over 18. <clears throat> if we wanted to find the probability of a face card, Again, going back to my table here, there's two ways that you could do this. You could say there's a total of 52 cards and then fill in where all your face cards are at. Count those up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, put that 12 over 52, which then you can reduce to three over 13. Your other option that you could have also done is say, look, Here's all the marked cards across the top. There's a total of 13 types of cards. Out of those 13 types of cards that are marked, there's one, two, three face cards, three out of 13. That's another way that you could find the probability. All right, next you're gonna run into probability events that use the word and and the word or. Probability of A and B are the outcomes that satisfy both A and B. This is an intersection. So the probability of A and B is the probability of finding A and the probability of finding B, and you multiply the two together. If we have the probability of A or B, then the outcomes that satisfy A or B are both a union B. So that goes back, if you remember, we were talking about that cardinal number, the cardinal number of A plus the cardinal number of B minus the cardinal number of A intersect B. Same formula, but just applied with probabilities. You take the probability of A plus the probability of B and subtract the probability of the intersection of A and B, which is up here. So some people will go probability of A plus probability of B minus the probability of A times the probability of B. So it's nice because you have this probability, 
this probability, then you have these two, you use them again, you just multiply them and then subtract them from those two probabilities. All right, so if I wanted to find the probability of hearts and face cards, all right, so here's my matrix of all 52 cards. This is my deck. So this will be the probability of hearts times the probability of face cards. Well, how many hearts are there? Well, straight across the first row, there's 13 hearts. That's 13 out of 52. How many face cards? We saw that earlier. There was 12 of them. There's my 12 face cards. See my pretty little faces there? So 12 out of 52. So if we start to reduce 13 over 52, that's 1 fourth. 12 out of 52, that will reduce to 3 over 13. Multiply these two together, you get 3 out of 52, which technically, what's the probability of a heart and a face card has to happen at the same time? Well, this is the only place that you get hearts and face cards. Jack of hearts, queen of hearts, king of hearts, 3 out of 52. If we put in OR instead, now we're going to have the probability of the hearts plus the probability of the face cards minus the intersection. Well, we just found that. That was right there, the 3 out of 52. So the probability of hearts, again, was 13 out of 52 plus the face cards, 12 out of 52. And then you have to subtract off the 3 over 52 because we don't want to count the Jack of Hearts, Queen of Hearts, King of Hearts twice because they, those, heart, those cards only occur once. So that comes out to be 22 over 52. And again, the nice thing if you draw this picture out, you can just count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 22 out of 52. All right, and then that can reduce by 2, so that gives us 11 out of 26.